Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Encounter Community Church online service. We're so glad to have you this morning and just wanted to emphasize a few things that are happening here at the church. First of all, for those of you that may not know, we have launched an outdoor service in our parking lot on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. And we're gonna be out there as long as the weather permits and until the regulations change on COVID to where we can safely be able to meet inside. But with that in mind, we do practice safe social distancing measures as well as we keep our service as touchless as possible to make sure that we are protecting everyone the best that we can. So again, a Sunday mornings, 10.30 a.m. at the Encounter Community Church parking lot. However, we know that there are some of you who are uncomfortable with meeting at this point, completely understandable. So with that in mind, we will continue to be providing an online worship service experience for you. This coming Friday night, October 30th at 8 o'clock p.m., our youth will be having a Zoom Halloween party. It is a custom party, so your kids can get dressed up for that. So if you have a teenager that is in middle school or in high school, we would love to invite them to join us. If you would like more information for that, please email us at EncounterSouthBay at gmail.com. Again, that's EncounterSouthBay at gmail.com. It's getting close to that time when we are starting to think about Christmas. And one of the traditions that we have at Encounter that we love to do in being able to make a difference is every year we pack boxes for kids around the world who may not have the opportunity to, to receive a Christmas present. So we've had boxes that go to places like the Philippines. We even had boxes come here in America to serve the indigenous people that live in our nation. This year, due to COVID restrictions, we will not be having a packing party. So what we're asking families to do this year is to pick up a box or two, fill it, and bring it back. If your family would love to be able to serve kids around the world and bring joy to those kids, then please pick up your box beginning November the 1st. If you love to stay connected to the things that are happening here at Encounter, please text at sign up ECC to 81010. It's through an app called the Remind app. It's what teachers use to be able to communicate with their students. So we do not have access to your personal information. It's just a way for us to be able to interact with one another through the app and just to keep you connected to the things that are happening here at Encounter Community Church. If you would like to be able to follow along with today's message, place your phone in camera mode, aim it at the QR code that you see on the screen. A link will pop up, follow that link, and it will take you to the announcements for today as well as the message for today. And just be aware that there are song lyrics on the Bible app for now, because it's one of the tools that we utilize for Sunday mornings to keep our services as touchless as possible. Again, thank you so much. We are so honored to have you with us. Welcome to another episode of the Encounter Community Church online service. Again, we're so thankful uh, that you're with us this morning. Again, just remind you, just in case you didn't know, we do have outdoor services that are happening in our parking lot. Again, it's at 10.30 a.m. So if you weren't able to make it today, we will definitely be having it again next week. We'd love to have you come out for that. But as we said, if you are uncomfortable, we completely understand and we will continue to provide an online experience for you to be able to meet your needs in that way as well. But thank you so much. I, I'm really excited today and here's the reason why is because Stan is going to be preaching. Stan is the associate pastor here at Encounter Community Church. And the reason why I'm excited is because he's talking about forgiveness and he's going to really dig into it so much so that he's going to even tell his own story. So I really want to encourage you, tune in and listen up to what Stan is going to be talking about. Real quickly, for those of you that call Encounter Home and you want to continue to support us Financially, there are several ways that you could do that, is you could send a, t a check to that 
uh, mailing address there. Uh, the other thing uh, that you can do as well is you can go to encountercommunity.church or the link will be in uh, our description below as well as our address in case you weren't able to write that down. That will also be in the description below so that you can be reminded of that. And then you can also do it via text. Uh, so you would text that number and then you would just put an amount in to that number uh, for both of the online process as well as for texting. Uh, if you've never done it before, uh, there may be a process that you may have to go through. Uh, and again, uh, we don't use that process to spam you or anything like that. But what we will do is at the end of the year is we will give you a tax contribution record for your tax purposes. So we just want to let you know that up front. So you, if you have to fill something out that you're not thinking they were trying to get information, we're not. But again, I'm excited about this. Continuing to go through this process, we're in the middle of a series called The Grudge. So let me go ahead and pray and get us started. Father, I thank you for this morning. And, and God, I just want to pray that you are with Stan. God, I pray that you would lead him and guide him as he talks about forgiveness to us. And the great thing about it is, as Stan is talking about forgiveness, he's not talking about it from an abstract perspective of someone who's just giving you advice. He is talking about it from the perspective of having to work through something truly tragic, but then being able to go through the process of forgiveness. So I pray that his words will speak to us today and that we will walk away feeling that this is possible but also that we'll walk away with a true picture of what forgiveness looks like. And all these things we ask in your name. Amen.
It's good to be here with you today, even though we're not in person. Uh, I can't believe it's October 2020. What a year this has been. I'm telling you, I can't believe it. I would have never thought last October that this year I would be standing up here saying today, October 25th, I'd be saying, thank you, Lord. It's great to be meeting together virtually. Who would have thought I would ever be saying that today? But it's great to be with you to worship together, even though it's virtually. You just never know what you're going to be truly thankful for in this life, do you? It's great to be able to, to worship today, even though it's that way. Uh, I'm excited about today's message, and I hope you are excited as well. It's great to see each and every one of you here, although I can't really see you. I can see you in my mind's eye. This is week two of a four-part series titled The Grudge. Have you ever held a grudge? I have. I really have. Ken kicked off this series last week with a, with a really good message, and I'm sure that Daniel will have a great message for us as well as he comes and, and preaches next Sunday morning. Last week, Ken spoke to us about, about how a grudge can be, can be held or housed in your body and that may be resulting in the death of a relationship or many other things. And how we need to let go of pain. We need to let go of that, of that hurt, of that res resentment that, that can come from holding a grudge. That's good stuff that he, he shared with us last Sunday. Today we're going to get even deeper into this thing that we're calling the grudge. Even deeper into it, I want to warn you that today's message might be a little bit challenging. I know it's been challenging for me as I've, as I've went through um, uh, looking into having this message today. It was challenging for me. But keep in mind this morning, and this is my thought, many times in life, the best things that, that come on the other side of difficult things. Today's message is a, is a heavy message, like I said, and I've been praying about it for, like I said, three weeks ever since Ken asked me to preach this morning. We're going to begin today, today by looking into Luke chapter 17. Turn there, if you will, to that gospel this morning. It's going to set the tone and the stage for our study today. But before we begin that, before we do it, I just want to say again, this message may be a difficult for some of us because 
This message may dredge up some things in your past or some things, more than one things, in, thing in your past that, that may be something that you don't want to think about even. Maybe something that is a difficult thing in your life. But I tell you, we often find what is best on the other side of hard things. Okay, as we look into Luke chapter 17, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He was helping to do, him to understand that they would be hurt, that, that, that they would be disappointed in this life, that they may be, that they may be betrayed by someone close to them. He told them this, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. And it says in another translation, the, the, the very same thing, it says, it's impossible that these things won't come. It's impossible that offenses won't come in your life. So they're going to come. They're going to come. You may be betrayed at different points in, in your life. He says this as we look into Luke chapter 17 and verse 3. It says, so watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. In other words, he's saying, when this happens, not if, when this happens, when it happens, don't just pretend like it didn't happen. Don't, don't, don't just uh, uh, say, uh, sweep it under the rug. You, you need to confront them about it. We need to deal with it. As Christians, we need to try to make things right. Our goal our goal shouldn't be to put them down or try to put them in the place where you think they should be. Our goal should be to have reconciliation with them. Reconciliation. We need to try to find a way of healing in these things that happen. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them, but check it out. If they repent, you need to forgive them. And we, said, we can say, okay, Lord, I can do that. If someone does something to me and they come back and repent for it, I can forgive them. You can forgive them. We can forgive them for things like that. But then Jesus gets down to the thing that's incredibly hard, the challenging part. Look at verse number four. He says, if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back and, and, and repents, forgive him. Forgive him. <laughs> Say what? That is a hard road to hold, brother. That's a hard thing to do, I'm telling you. <sighs> okay, the disciples are hearing him say this. And I believe that, that they are thinking the same thing that you're probably thinking right now, and the same thing that popped into my mind. All right, Lord, I can give him one time. I can Maybe two times I can give him, but three times? Four, five, six, seven times in one day? Seven times in one day? Are you kidding me? If they come back and repent, if they come back and apologize to you, forgive them. Which, you know, this seven times here actually means as many times as they do it. Doesn't, it could be more than seven. You need to forgive them. And check out what the disciples say in verse number five. So the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. They felt incapable of measuring up to the standards that were set forth by the Lord. They said, we need more faith to do that, Lord. Increase our faith, Father. Increase our faith. The title of today's message is The Faith to Forgive. The Faith to Forgive. That takes some faith. I want to stop and pray right here before we get into this message that God would help us this morning, right now, to reach down and increase our faith as we need it. Bow with me, if you will. Father, I ask right now that you would, you would just be with us today. Increase our faith, Father. We need more faith to do this, Lord. We need more faith to forgive when people come against us in horrible ways. I know, God, that I will be, I will be uh, telling people things that may, may cause them to think about things that uh, they don't want to think about, Father. 
They, 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 they have been hurt incredibly by uh, different things in their lives, Lord. They may have been betrayed, and it may have happened years ago, Lord. It may have happened decades ago. It may have happened recently, Father God. Be with us. It may be happening right now in their lives, dear Lord. It may be happening right now, and I pray that your spirit would just give us the strength, that it would give us the power to deal with it, Lord, that, that your word would speak life and help and hope to us right now this morning. I pray that uh, your spirit would be with us in a special way. We don't have the power to do this on our own, Father. We don't have this power, Lord. We need the help from you. So I pray that right now you would increase our faith. Rain that down upon us, Lord, this morning, that we may be able to do what you would have us to do in these kinds of situations, that we would be able to, to do just as you have done to us and forgive others. Show grace and mercy to them, Lord. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My next thought. Who betrayed you? Who lied to you or, or, or lied about you? Who mistreated you or who took advantage of you? Last week, Ken spoke about letting go. And, and, and that can be relatively easy as long as it's something small. But when a person does something to you that's really, really big, really, really painful, really, really hurtful, it's not so easy to do sometimes could be someone that you trusted. Could be someone that you admired. Could have been someone that you loved that caused these kinds of things in your life. Who betrayed you. Could have been a roommate who stole from you. Maybe it was a bully in school. Maybe a boyfriend or a girlfriend that lied to you or worse yet, lied about you. Perhaps it was your father, who you wanted more than nothing, more than to please them, but they kept putting you down. He kept putting you down and making you feel small. Maybe it was a spouse, a spouse that betrayed you and broke, crushed your heart. Maybe it was that. Or maybe it was someone that touched you inappropriately and made you feel or think somehow that it was your fault. Who betrayed you? Who hurt you? I was thinking this. Do we really need to forgive? Do we really need to forgive something like that? Do we? Something that they don't deserve forgiveness for at all? How do we forgive things like that? How do we do it, Lord? How do we do it? I do have some kind of understanding of this in my own life. This happened about 40 years ago. And it isn't something... It's not something that totally ever heals. My daughter, Tammy, was almost 16 years old. She was in high school, enjoying life like most teenagers do. She had a good friend named Sally, and we had met Sally on several occasions. We had even met her parents, but we didn't know them very well. They owned a boat, and the boat was docked in the Long Beach Marina. One day, just before Thanksgiving, uh, Tammy came to us and asked if she could go with Sally down to the, the marina with her father, with Sally's father, and, and be on the boat while he worked on it because it wasn't running. So Joanne asked Jake. Jake was the father's name. So Joanne asked Jake if they were going to take the boat out at all. And he said no. 
that he didn't even think he would get it running. So we let her go with them. It turned out that Jake was drinking a lot as he was working on the boat. And just after sunset, Jake got the boat running. Jake thought it was a good idea to take it out for a test run. He was drunk by this time and was speeding in the harbor. He saw what, there was a barge there. He saw water spraying up off of this barge, spraying up off of it. And he says, girls, look, a car wash for boats. There was a hatch. There was an open hatch on the boat, and Tammy was sitting on the top of the hatch. The hatch led down into the, to the cabin, and she was sitting there. And, and Jake uh, thought that it would be funny or a good idea to get the girls wet by going through the water that was coming off of this barge. But instead, he, at high speed, ran that boat directly into the barge. The impact threw him and his daughter off the boat into the water. Neither of them were hurt. But the hatch fell on Tammy and crushed her spleen. They said that she never regained consciousness after the impact. How do you forgive something like that? Well, we didn't. We didn't for a long time. And it wasn't a grudge that I held for Jake. It was hatred. It didn't matter how incredibly devastated he was by what he had done. Hate was ingrained in me for him. Joanne went to counseling for a long time after that, but I never did. Let, let, let me step back just a minute. Uh, before the accident, a, a while before the accident, a different friend of Tammy's got her to go uh, to her church. We had been going as a family to church for quite some time, but not, not regularly, more sporadically than, than regularly. Tammy and Joanne had been baptized on the same Sunday morning. Tammy liked her friend's church, Paramount Baptist Church. In fact, her funeral was there. Our family started going to that church regularly. And as some time passed, and our understanding of the gospel increased, we realized, and it became evident that we needed to forgive Jake, not because he deserved it, not because he deserved it, but just as much for our peace of mind. And it really is that, and listen to this, forgiveness in these kinds of situations sets you free more than the person that you forgive. To this day, it's hard to even talk about this. It's hard. But without a doubt, forgiveness was and is the right thing to do. Although it doesn't make what happened okay. It doesn't. Forgiveness, though, let's, let's move to something else. Forgiveness is just a little bit like trying to to vacuum up a, a piece of paper, a piece of lint that's, that's on the floor. Has that ever happened to you? Trying to vacuum something that just won't come up? You're going over it. I, I, can, I know how to vacuum. I'm going over it with perfect, perfect precision. And it won't come up. I go back and forth, so it won't come up. So I try from a different angle. I come at it from this way, and it still won't come up. And I try another angle. This paper won't come up off the floor. What do I do? What do I do? I reach down, and I pick it up. What then? I look at it. And then I throw it back down on the floor and I try again. That's what I do. So, I'm thinking, what do we do when we try from every angle but we can't forgive? 
What do we do? It's heart wrenching. It's agonizing. But I hope you'll understand that, that God tells us clearly that we are to forgive. We're going to look now at a couple of places in Scripture about this. Matthew 5, 43 and 44. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Yeah, I, know I, got, I can feel good about the guy that treats me right and hate the guy that treats me wrong. But Jesus goes on and says in verse 44, But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. <laughs> That's not what I want to do, Lord. I don't want to do that. I can't do that, Father. I don't want to do that. This next verse is something that we need to understand. Look with me, if you will, at what Paul says in Ephesians 4.32. It says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. And this is it right here. This is it. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. That's it right there. That's why we need to forgive, because just as in Christ, God forgave us. We need to forgive. That's straightforward stuff right there. We can move on. Look at Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Listen, though. Listen. But if you do not forgive men's sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Whoa. I mean, whoa. That's pretty clear. That's pretty straightforward as well. Pretty heavy stuff. Well, what does it mean to forgive? What does it mean? First, let's look at a couple of things that it does not mean. Things it doesn't mean. First of all, we need to understand that forgiveness is not forgetting. It's not forgetting. You don't necessarily need to wipe your brain clean. You don't need to do that. It's not saying that what they did wasn't wrong because it was. It's not saying that what they did wasn't sinful because it was. It was. But we can be forgiving and still set clear boundaries about what happened. Clear boundaries in our lives for what happened there. Next, forgiveness isn't fair. It isn't fair. There's nothing fair about it. It's not natural. What's fair is to pay them back, right? That's what's fair. It's fair to pay them back. But Jesus says, pray for your enemy. Okay, buddy, I pray that you get hemorrhoids in your ears. That's fair. I don't think it's possible, but it's fair. It's fair. I say, God, you got to be fair. You got to be fair, Lord. What's interesting is we like it when God's not fair with us. Say what? Yeah, we like it when God's not fair to us. Look what this says. God's not always fair. He's always just. He's always just. If God was always fair, then I would get what my sins deserve. I'd get that. God's always just, but He's not always fair. We deserve death, hell, punishment. Thank God. Instead, He gives us grace. He gives us grace. 
So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving others what God gave us in Christ. Giving us the same thing. And we need to give that same thing to other people that God has offered to us. We need to give it to them. If you are a follower of Christ, you are, have experienced the mercy of God, the goodness, the grace of God in your life. Grace you didn't deserve. Love you don't deserve. Forgiveness is giving the very same thing to others that God has given to us. It is the power of the gospel. Look, if you will, and turn to 1 John 1 through 1 9. 1 John 1 9. Follow as I read. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. I thank God for that verse. What a wonderful verse that is. He purifies us from all unrighteousness when we come and ask him for forgiveness. Use the scripture sometime when, when we're speaking to people trying to uh, get them to accept Christ or realize that they need to have Christ in their lives. But this scripture is to Christians. We need to understand that scripture. We need to ask for forgiveness. And when we do, he gives it to us. And we know this, that the gospel isn't just receiving forgiveness. It's giving forgiveness as well. Not just receiving, but forgiving it. Uh, getting, forgiving it as well. It shouldn't just flow to us. This grace, this forgiveness, not just flow to us, but it needs to flow through us. This forgiveness needs to flow through us. The question is, how is your flow? How's your flow? Are you like a beaver? You know what a beaver does? He gets into the water. He loves that flow coming down, but he builds a dam. He builds a dam there in the water. He doesn't want it to flow through. He builds that dam. Are you like a beaver? Have you built a dam in your life? You love having that grace of God coming into your life. You love that. But you build this dam, you won't let it flow. You don't want to give that forgiveness coming out. We need both. The gospel isn't just receiving forgiveness, it's giving it as well. It shouldn't just flow to us, it needs to be flowing through us. It's just as we received undeserved love, undeserved Grace, undeserved mercy for things that we've done. We are called upon to give those things as well as to receive them. In fact, in the Lord's Prayer, it has words that speak about this. It talks about forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer. Listen as I read this. Matthew 6, 9 through 12. This is... This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And this is it right here. Verse 12. Look what it says in verse 12. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Man, look back there at verse 12. Look back at verse 12. It says, forgive us our debts. That's not speaking about money. That's not speaking about money at all. That's speaking about moral debts. That's speaking about sins. That's speaking about offenses. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us of our offenses, Lord. And then the last part of 12 says, as we also 
have forgiven our debtors. There it is again. We need to forgive our debtors. Are we praying, forgive me? Forgive me, Lord, just like I forgave the others that have sinned against me? Are we praying that? Can we pray that? Do we pray that? Do we? Forgive me, Lord, like I forgave, forgave my boss that I still hate. Forgive me, Lord, about my ex-wife. I've forgiven her, Lord, but I just put tax under her tires. You know, man. Remember that flow isn't just to us. It needs to be through us. Through us. Why would God ask us to forgive? Well, I won't know one reason he asks us to forgive. Because he loves us so much. Is why? Because he loves us so much. He doesn't just ask you to forgive someone else to make them feel better or to give them forgiveness. That's a great thing that comes from it. But he asked you to forgive to help you. He asked you to for, forgive them to help heal the wound that's in you. I have a scar on my heart. Scar there, it's never going to go away. Been there for 40 years, you know. But I tell you one thing. That scar on my heart is better than having an open wound there. An open wound that is oozing hatred and unforgiveness. The scar that happened after we forgave Jake stopped oozing hatred, stopped oozing unforgiveness. And that's a lot better than not forgiving at all. I know that this message could have been hard and could have brought up wounds. And I hope you're not hearing me say that this is easy. Or oh, just do it. It's not easy. It's not easy. What's easy is to hold a grudge. That's easy. What's easy is to live in bitterness. What's easy is wishing the worst for them. What's easy is not trying to heal. That's what's easy. What's easy is to walk in hatred and unforgiveness. Those kinds of things are what's easy. It takes faith to forgive. Increase our faith, Lord. I pray. Faith empowers me. Faith empowers you. Faith, and faith empowers us as followers of Christ. Choose to offer the same thing that God has offered to you. Choose to do that. Even though it may be a process. It may not be like turning on a light switch. It may take some time and it will take time many times might take quite a bit of time. But need keep working at it. It takes faith to forgive. Ask yourself this. How much freedom do I desire? How much freedom do I deserve? Ask yourself. Let it go. It takes faith to forgive. Say, I'm not going to let what that person did to me hold me down. I'm not going to let what they did poison my soul. I'm not going to let what they did pollute my heart. Don't let past abuse rob your future. Don't do that. 
I know this may be tough, but sometimes the best healing happens on the other side of pain. I'm going to simply end this message right now by saying this again. Forgiveness is giving to others the same thing that Christ has given to us. Let's pray. Father God, I come before you right now, Lord, asking that you increase our faith to forgive, Father. Increase it. As we are in your presence right now, Lord, as we are here with you, I would ask, Lord, that you reach down and touch us. Touch us. Whatever it is someone here might be struggling with right now, whatever it is that, that has uh, been dredged up in their life about what we've been speaking today, I pray that you will be with them and help them. Help them to have that forgiveness in their hearts. Work in us, Lord, I pray. Work in our hearts and in our lives. I pray, dear Father God, that, that, that you would help us to offer to others what Christ has offered to us. Do a healing work in us, Father God, I pray this morning. And, and I pray that, Lord, help us to see that change that will come because of it. Help those that have been carrying these burdens around for a long time, maybe to finally let them go. Help us all, dear Father God, to have the faith to forgive. Thank you for increasing our faith to forgive today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Stan, I want to take a moment to just say thank you so much. Thank you for taking a risk, for sharing your story with us. And I hope that some of you will be able to pull from Stan's story that forgiveness really is a process. I hope that this has been a healing process for some of you because there are a lot of misunderstandings about forgiveness and what it is. I also want to take a moment to invite you Today, Stan talked about just the necessity of forgiveness, why we need to do that. But we're going to dig a little bit more into the process. Specifically, Stan's going to talk about his story, and he's going to talk about how he was able to do that. When he's going to do that is on our podcast. So I want to invite you to join us to listen to our podcast. We will be releasing it either on Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning but we'll be releasing our latest podcast and Stan's going to be our special guest. And on that, he's going to share his process of forgiveness. How did he get through the break? How did he come to a breakthrough, the changes in his life? So, so please, please join us for that. If you would love to be reminded, then I want to encourage you to make sure that you follow us on Facebook as well as on Instagram, because what we'll do is we will release um, the announcement for the podcast. That way you can be reminded about being able to join us to listen to it. Then also want to encourage you, if you are on YouTube, please subscribe today. Click the bell for notifications. That way when we post new things, when we, when we get everything ready, uh, you'll be notified about that when we post it onto YouTube as well. We would love the chance to be able to pray for you. If there's anything that you would like for us to pray for, specifically when it comes to forgiveness and helping you to go through that process, feel free to email us at EncounterSouthBay at gmail.com. We will see that, and we would love the opportunity to be able to pray for you as well. And also, if you would love to stay connected with us, then text add sign up ECC to 81010. We can interact through the app. It's the Remind app, so we never have access to your personal information. It's just a way for us to interact with one another. And in that, you can also be able to, to share your prayer request as well. But with that, if you miss the announcements, they will play again after the service. And we just want to remind you that Encounter is about three things. Love up. We want to love God and love who he is. And actually understanding his forgiveness allows us to be able to forgive others. Love out, which means love others. That's what Jesus Christ has called us to do. Love others. And, and in that, one of the best ways that you could do that is to begin to forgive others for what they've done to you. And more importantly, love in. When we say love yourself and take care of yourself. And one of the most freeing things that you may be able to do for yourself right now is to forgive someone for something that they've done to you. Well, take care. God bless you. And we'll see you once again next week.
Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Encounter Community Church online service. We're so glad to have you this morning and just wanted to emphasize a few things that are happening here at the church. First of all, for those of you that may not know, we have launched an outdoor service in our parking lot on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. And we're gonna be out there as long as the weather permits and until the regulations change on COVID to where we can safely be able to meet inside. But with that in mind, we do practice safe social distancing measures as well as we keep our service as touchless as possible to make sure that we are protecting everyone the best that we can. So again, the Sunday mornings, 10.30 a.m. at the Encounter Community Church parking lot. However, we know that there are some of you who are uncomfortable with meeting at this point, completely understandable. So with that in mind, we will continue to be providing an online worship service experience for you. This coming Friday night, October 30th at 8 o'clock p.m., our youth will be having a Zoom Halloween party. It is a custom party, so your kids can get dressed up for that. So if you have a teenager that is in middle school or in high school, we would love to invite them to join us. If you would like more information for that, please email us at EncounterSouthBay at gmail.com. Again, that's EncounterSouthBay at gmail.com. It's getting close to that time when we are starting to think about Christmas. And one of the traditions that we have at Encounter that we love to do in being able to make a difference is every year we pack boxes for kids around the world who may not have the opportunity to, to receive a Christmas present. So we've had boxes that go to places like the Philippines. We even had boxes come here in America to serve the indigenous people that live in our nation. This year, due to COVID restrictions, we will not be having a packing party. So what we're asking families to do this year is to pick up a box or two, fill it, and bring it back. If your family would love to be able to serve kids around the world and bring joy to those kids, then please pick up your box beginning November the 1st. If you love to stay connected to the things that are happening here at Encounter, please text at sign up ECC to 81010. It's through an app called the Remind app. It's what teachers use to be able to communicate with their students. So we do not have access to your personal information. It's just a way for us to be able to interact with one another through the app and just to keep you connected to the things that are happening here at Encounter Community Church. If you would like to be able to follow along with today's message, place your phone in camera mode, aim it at the QR code that you see on the screen. A link will pop up, follow that link, and it will take you to the announcements for today as well as the message for today. And just be aware that there are song lyrics on the Bible app for now because it's one of the tools that we utilize for Sunday mornings to keep our services as touchless as possible. Again, thank you so much. We are so honored to have you with us.